My name's Ryan Close, I'm a CIO, um, and I also look after the supply chain execution for Australian Vintage. Um, Australian Vintage was previously known as McGuigan uh, Simeon White. We did a name change um, uh, purely because of the number of different kinds of acquisitions we did. Just to give a bit of a background, um, Australian Vintage um, came from um, two entities, Brian McGuigan Wines, a public company, and Simeon Wines as a public company. Um, uh, when I, I came together, and my job there was to lead the acquisition or the merger of those two, so I was actually not in the IT role, I was actually in the more the operational type role there leading this. Uh, one of the challenges of Brian McGuigan Wines and Simeon Wines was both of them had one thing in common, both of them had a, an IT budget in each company of $100,000 each. So it made it very difficult to justify my um, spends going through. And what I also had was each of these companies also had a number of other entities inside these companies which were not merged either. So they actually had a corporate office where they had a couple of accountants and they would consolidate the spreadsheet. And that's how they worked. These were two public companies sitting there. So obviously merging those two together, we, uh, we adopted obviously a strategy where we had to embrace a lot of the legacy systems coming through. Over time, we then bought Miranda Wines, if anyone's heard of Miranda Wines Group. We then, uh, we, we created Tempest 2 Wines. Uh, that was a company that was born out of um, a relationship with us in the Roach Group. We then bought, we then moved to the side and we actually went to buy some other assets around our supply chain. We bought Foster's Muldara Blass um, Winery site, which is a big packaging facility in Mildura. We bought that to complement our, um, I guess, our internal supply chain. We then went and bought Nepenthe wines. Uh, anyone here who knows Nepenthe wines is doing well. It's for South Australia only, but in South Australia it's probably quite well recognised. Uh, and we are now embarking on, um, uh, as we are uh, not only starting to sell off some of our assets to get our balance right, we are um, spawning off other brands. Like we just recently bought a brand called Billy Rock. <laughs> Billy Rock is um, on some of the wineries you see doing cans now. Uh, we just bought a product there, so now we do a cans as part of our portfolio as well, so wine in a can. Uh, uh, just a few statistics, as a, as a wine company, we're, we're the, we, we'd be classed as the uh, largest Australian wine company, which is only wine. So as a company, we only do wine. Um, we're on the Australian Stock Exchange. Um, our other counterparts, Orlando, Ferro Hardy, which is Constellation Fosters. Fosters obviously on the Stock Exchange, but have that beer angle. We would we'd be the true wine company uh, in Australia, and that's what we do. Um, we have six production sites around. We crush in excess of 200,000 tonne. Just to get a feeling of 200,000 tonne, uh, uh, and the, some of the size of our wineries, one of our wineries, which I think might flick up here in the background, uh, crushes 150,000 tonne. Um, <coughs> is anyone familiar with a Rockford's wine? Does anyone drink Rockford's basket? Pretty? Yep. Rockford's um, wines is a, is a wine company in, in, in South Australia. Rockford's entire production uh, would fit into one tank that we have at our large winery site. So it gives you an idea of the scale of how the wine industry moves itself around. Uh, other interesting facts, we would be, we're obviously in every region, pretty much around Australia, except for the WA side. Um, logistics probably doesn't make that um, to our benefit. Uh, vineyards, we're the second largest vineyard holder in Australia, Foster's being number one, we're number two. Um, we have over 15,000 acres of vineyard um, out there. Obviously, <coughs> why the media would affect us with the water crisis. Uh, packaging, we do about 8 million cases uh, internal, and we have the outsource strategy around that. From our sales, we are more export than we are domestic. 70% of our sales is generated in the export market. Um, very big in the UK. Um, we, out of Australia, we're Tesco's largest wine supplier. We do in excess of 3 million cases to Tesco's every year out of there. Unique about us as well is that all the wine from Australia and sales of Tesco's actually ships from Australia. We don't actually hold any stock in the UK or anything like that. So it's all done out of Australia, so we keep it all done within Australia. Our products, we have 200 brands in our company, 700 SKUs. You're probably thinking in your head, uh, uh, which ones are they? But obviously there's a lot that you probably haven't seen or don't even realise are actually our wine. Things like, uh, uh, if you know the Bailey's Irish Cream, we do the Kilkenny Cream. So we do the um, bastardised product of that one. Uh, uh, from that one there we have, a, a, I guess, a, a diversity which brings a little bit of a unique side to Australian vintage. Not only do we do table wine sparkling fortified, but we also do byproducts of wine. So we're doing the, um, uh, the concentrate. So we, we're taking the extract of winemaking and not only selling bulk wine as a juice, but we do the concentrates. We, we sell aromas and all those kind of things out there. So we do, uh, we've got a full, I guess, a full scale. So our customers would include Foster's Orlando and these companies as well. And obviously the Coles and Woolworths, Tesco's of the world. 
our landscape as an organisation, because we grew by acquisition, um, and this brings us to, I guess, um, why SOA was important for us, um, our company was presented with um, uh, all these challenges of start on through, that's the Baronga Hill Winery, as you've seen there. Um, uh, we split our company into six silos. We actually created a vineyard division. Now, these divisions never existed day one. The companies all saw themselves arrogantly as one. Uh, my first job, I actually, uh, I actually led the role of squigging the company into six. Uh, we created a vineyards, a winery division, a packaging division, a logistics division, a sales domestic and a sales export division. Now, the reason we did that is because of each of those divisions, uh, you, can gear, you can gear culture and you can gear focus and all that to the actual division without tr confusing an organisation in complexity. So using, obviously, that HR uh, attitude across it, our company has this silo model today. Um, we're starting to come a little bit unstuck now in this model there. Um, uh, as, as the industry starts to move now into electronic ordering, uh, it might sound easy where Coles or Tesco's or Woolworths want to conduct an electronic order with us. Uh, what it means is now I've got all these silos down here which are handshaking at the moment, yet they want to get an electronic visual of exactly what's going on in my organisation. So instead of grabbing all these silos and blending them together, what, what we're doing is still embracing the silo model, but we're going to wrap uh, an umbrella around all these and uh, effectively taking the, the attitude that when Tesco's or Coles Mine <laughs> come in and they have an order, instead of being owned by the domestic division, which is only one of six divisions and they have to talk to the other divisions and, um, and do their bit, corporate or group will own the order and we will then have people participate in the order to do it. And we'll manage and we'll, we'll manage the progress and all that of that order. So I guess um, uh, that's just probably why we've adopted a SOA approach. The other, the other reason uh, we did that is um, uh, we've been pushed by Tesco's and, and pretty strong around our carbon. Sounds easy um, uh, about carbon there, but carbon is, is, takes the whole supply chain out. Our carbon needs to be tracked right from the vineyard through which wine we crushed out, through which trucking companies we use to move the bulk wine around, how many times we transfer wine between tanks and use that kind of energy, all the way through a logistics sales and eventually a ship or air freight or wherever to our final customer. They say an average, uh, an average case of wine is about three kilo of carbon it takes to do it. So it, if we go to Tesco's and we say, for example, um, yes, we'll make your wine carbon neutral, what does that mean to me to do with? I'm effectively putting a sticker on the wine and I'm saying I've got compliance to that sticker. So I'm saying, I'm guessing you're three kilo. Uh, somebody's gonna to come to us and say, well, you need to offset that. It's a value, it sits on our balance sheet. So you, now you start to say, well, all of a sudden IT now has to come in there and capture this like a cost or profit of the company. And that's where, um, why we've said here, we need to wrap systems around all our systems here and even systems that don't actually belong in our company. Things like we outsource all our transport logistics, but their process is important to me to know exactly what trucks they use. Uh, did they cross stock a truck? And those kind of things do put an impact on, on uh, I guess, on, on any carbon result. So I need to treat carbon like a compliance, as I treat label compliance on the actual bottle of wine as well. Now our, so our solar approach, um, the way, way we approach solar, and uh, this was about three, four years ago, uh, solar was described in the IT community and, they, and we found that any article or anything you're talking about, we're talking about solar purely technical. Our mindset was that um, our challenges were driven more from the business. We needed to say, um, uh, I've got a challenge in business here, we don't really care how the technical works there, but I need to, I, I need to do this at business level. I need to know why in the business level did I move or make that decision up there. So obviously there's a lot of business rules and that going on up there. We have a number of systems today in our company. Uh, over our wineries, for example, we would have a different wine production at every system. We have J.D. Edwards, which sits in the middle. We have a different system doing export. We have a different system. So we've used a best of breed technology concept in there. And also uh, uh, legacy, which obviously a lot of our cells are hamstrung sometimes on wanting to take these legacies out because of the cost involved or the risk it brings to the business. So instead of fighting that side, we embrace them and we bring another level over the top and we focus all our development in this area.